Back by popular demand, me, my fellow viewers have been requesting for a new video. So, here's a new video. It's not about Minecraft though, deal with it. This is Martin Magni. He's a self-described terribly reclusive game developer who lives somewhere in Sweden. And you know what he loves doing? Making games. I love gaming. He did a whole bunch of really boring stuff like making these random papers. Ooh, what's this? A paper called Defected Presents Housemasters Todd Edwards. Oh crap, I've been reading from the website. I hate you, I hate you. Anyway, the papers themselves delve into things that deal with Computer science? I don't know. These terms are way out of my scope. According to his biography, he wrote these papers over a span of seven years, yet couldn't finish his thesis. You know what he did instead? He made games. And while his early game tools crashed and burned, he was able to sell a concept game to a company named Linden Lab, where he eventually got enough money to seriously start working on his own games. His first game that's really successful was Odd Bought Out released as a paid download which later become free to play with ads sprinkled in the game deals with the ah, did you hear that that's a different robot that gets dumped in the bin because he's too defective i guess your job is to navigate the robot odd to the outside by controlling his character now there are only 100 levels which i've already completed but in general it's a pretty darn solid mobile game Odd Bought Out provided the foundation for his next game, Mechorama. This game was basically Odd Bought Out, but in 3D. Instead of leading robot to the great outdoors, you deal with this chunky boy to get to the red goal. Oh and don't forget the stars to Ash. This game was pretty darn good too, but you know what was sick? Using the game's built-in editor, you could make your own levels and share them with the community. This one I made myself. Or oh, that seriously. Building on the foundation of his older games, he would later make Fancade, the subject of this video. Uh, are you guys not tired of me speaking about games? The main philosophy of Fancade is that, well, it's the fan-made arcade. Which means that all of these games you see, they're not made by Martin, uh, uh They're made by the community. And what does that mean? You get to make your own games. Now granted, I can't understand anything here. What's this? Matt? If you're just like me and doesn't understand a single bit about this, don't fret. Fancade also includes a voxel editor, which is what fancaders or fancoders use to make their graphics for their games. And unlike the coding aspect, this part is relatively simple to understand. You just hit the edit button and paint away. Now, the color palette is still limited, but with a bit of creativity, you can make some sick looking stuff. If you're just like me, terrible at coding, but terrific at fiddling with art. You can modify other people's games and add your own spin to it. Here's a game that I made. Mom, this guy's self-promoting his games. And speaking of the games, let's get into the actual games, shall we? Fancade offers three tabs where you can play games. West battle, and arcade. We'll start with the quest tab. The quest tab is always available, so even if you're in the arctic with no service, in jail, or trapped in defected headquarters, you can still play games. The games are mostly a mix of Martin's own games sprinkled in with community-made games that get lucky enough to get into the quest tab. The games include Drive Mad, a game about driving mad, Recoil, a game about control- Hey, is that John Rambo? Gobble, a game where you control the avocado, avocado, Roper, 
a retro looking game where you control this guy that looks like he is constantly the router running. This side up, basically that push box game you played on your old Nokia. But this time in 3D loading, which is honestly a fun as hell game. Oddbot, which is hold on, is this Mechorama? There are over 75 worlds to complete, so you have enough time to wait till people rescue you from the Arctic. Perhaps the game's greatest magic can be found in the arcade. This is where all the action happens. They've got games like Waterworld, Wibbly Wobbly World, and I'm not saying that. Let's start with a couple, shall we? Descent is a really fun dancing line and color switch as scheme where you control an arrow as it travels down the ever changing landscape. It's pretty fun. The graphics are great too. Don't tell anyone this, but I failed so many times. This game is super dang hard. Drive Monster is a reskin drive mad variation where you drive monster trucks over ramps, abstract landscapes, and rocks. Just be careful not to go too fast. The game I mentioned earlier, the, that, is a simple platformer game where you take control of a floating platform as you roll the ball towards a ship. The game is great, controls are good, graphics are sick, but the name, yeah, that name, yeah, that's not very good. And Trench is a Minecraft slash mining tycoon game where you take control of this QB boy as you search for ores to the guff. Keep an eye out for this alien looking purple sludge as you can find gold in them. It's extremely enjoyable to play, especially on the go. Overtake is a runner game on wheels where you drive across procedurally generated terrain while you, well, overtake vehicles coming your way. Keep an eye out for these weird looking speedometer things as they help slow down your motorcycle. You don't, you don't have to crash. Snack Left is another one of the many games Martin has produced. In here, you control a wiggly wobbly snake across obstacles and platforms. It's also easy to play on the go, which is pretty much a requirement for fan cave games as the game is mostly played on mobile devices. Figments is a match tree style game where you find matching tiles, then you tap to clear the matching tiles. I find this one interesting because it also includes a pigmentless version, which I think would come in clutch for colorblind players. Orb match is another kind of match tree, but this time you shift little bubbles around to get four matching orbs. There's also chess. I'm pretty sure a lot of chess heads watch my videos, so here it is, chess. Pancade isn't just limited to art though. You see this tab? These are so-called demos, or as I like to call them, art. The demos here are not really about the gameplay per se, but they're more in the visuals. It's best explained by how Pancade explains it. Enjoy the visuals. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, make sure to give me a like and a subscribe too. If you don't, I will defect into your location.